To make the angler fish and the mini album that fits inside of it, you'll want to download a couple of files from Dropbox and the link is in the description below. Now the first one is called the materials and cutting guide and that's this one here that says angler fish at the top and the second one is the angler fish templates. So let's look at the materials and cutting guide first. Now the materials and cutting guide gives some overall dimensions and information about the project at the top and then it lists on this first page the materials that you need for the fish, the materials that I used for the mini album, and then some of the, the special tools that I would use. I didn't listen, list any of the regular paper crafting tools that you would normally have on hand. And we'll talk more about some of these uh, items in a moment. And then on the second and third pages we have the cutting guide and on the second page it lists all the medium weight chipboard and as the videos proceed I um, mention each section and what we'll be cutting from here and then on the third page there are several things the first is the lightweight chipboard and then the next is um, uh, the dowel cutting guide that if you want to have the teeth for the anglerfish to match the kind of snaggly teeth version I have, um, this is the dimensions I cut all of my dowels to. And then finally on the bottom here we have for the mini album the medium weight chipboard that's needed and then also the dimensions of the cardstock for the inside of the book block. And just to note that when I say medium weight chipboard, I'm talking about chipboard that's uh, 1 16th of an inch thick and lightweight chipboard is half that thickness or 1 32nd of an inch. Now because this project has a lot of curves going on, there are uh, uh, six pages of templates here. And as the videos proceed and we work on each section, I explain about each one of these templates. So I won't go into very much detail right now, but there's two pages for doing the jaw and then a page that has the head and then a page that has not only the fins, but the inside piece that goes inside of the mouth. Then we have all of our tail templates and then finally this is uh, decorative paper for the jaw, two templates for that. But as I said, as the videos progress, I will explain in detail about each template and how to use it. When I built this version, I used the Graphic 45 Voyage Beneath the Sea paper collection. Uh, for the anglerfish itself, I used papers from the 12 by 12 pad and the 6 by 6 pad. I also used one tiny thing from the decorative chipboard. And then I also used something from, this is the um, journaling and ephemera cards but it's not necessary for the fish to have either the journaling cards or the chipboard. Now for the uh, mini album I used leftover scraps from the 12 by 12 and 6 by 6. I used uh, a bunch of pieces from the chipboard and from the ephemera and journaling card set. I also used uh, things from the 8x8 pad and also from the um, this is the tags and pockets. Also under the materials there's a variety of um, accessories most of them are Tim Holtz products and uh, it's self-explanatory pocket watches, monocles, pulley wheels, a mini lantern and a couple of light bulbs and then also um, two faucet knobs. Now they go on either side of the fish's head but 
in order to, if you wanted to have two that would match, you would need to buy two packages. If you don't have, um, don't want to do that, just have two that don't match. It does, I don't think it matters. And then um, one thing that is important is uh, 18 inches of one quarter inch flexible tubing that's cuttable with scissors. Now I just got this from the hardware store and um, oh it, it was inexpensive I think this is um, this I, this is the smallest amount I could buy it was 25 feet and I it was under two dollars and it is a quarter inch in outside di diameter and 0.17 in inside di diameter and the there's two important things number one that outside diameter which is OD needs to be a quarter of an inch and then you need to be able to cut it with scissors because um, not just to cut it off in the length you need but to slit it up uh, the, the middle because we'll be inserting a wire in there and we need to be able to cut it. So this is polyethylene tubing. I didn't have any problem cutting that but um, you know if it's flexible you should be able to cut it with some good sharp scissors. I used a variety of dies in this project and some of them like these circle dies just make life a lot easier um, but if you you can always cut circles by hand you won't have quite the same accuracy as a die or a cutter but that will work but anyway um, these are the, the dies that I used this one is a Sizzix die um, I don't think it, its number is 656333 and it cuts a uh, two inch, two and a quarter, and two and a half inch circle. And then circles number four has uh, five different circle sizes on it ranging from five eighths up to two inches. And then uh, there's a movers and shaper die that's also circles that has a one and one quarter this is also a two inch and then a three inch die and those are the circles and then I use two of the gadget gears dies the bigs dies both uh, gadget gears the original one and then gadget gears number two and then two thinlet dies. The first one is gearhead and the other one is labels. And in addition to my cropodile which cuts a 1 8 and 3 16 inch hole, I also used both of these heavy duty We Are Memory Keepers punches. The green one punches a quarter inch hole and the blue one punches a 1 16th inch hole. And then to cut all the little dowels that are used for the teeth, I used this little mini miter box and saw setup that are uh, made by Exacto. There may be other brands that I'm just not familiar with. And even though I have all those different circle templates, there are still some circles that are odd sizes in the project. And for those, I use this EK Success circle cutting system with a glass mat. And I find that I can cut even the medium weight chipboard if I make sure to anchor the pieces down with some of the painter's tape and then anchor my cutter on top and then take my time and go around and around you know it might take 20 times before that circle is cut but it does cut it and does do a nice job I've been using it for a long time to do that so that's the EK success uh, I think it's the, the circle scissor pro circle cutter kind of a long name but that's a handy tool to have so I think that's all I wanted to say by ways of an introduction so let's get started building the anglerfish.
We'll start our construction by making the interior box. And I have here the one of the pages from the materials and cutting guide and I've cut all of these pieces that are listed under the interior box section. And then I've also gone ahead and glued them up. Every piece is doubled except for there is one single piece that is one half inch by five. But all the rest of these pieces are double uh, thickness of the medium weight chipboard. I glued them up and set them under some weights to dry so that they would be ready to go. Now before we do our glue up, we want to put some lines on our box end here and that is so that we can line up our channel piece on it after it's constructed and that channel is a half inch wide and our end is an inch and a half wide so if we draw a line in three quarters of an inch from either side that will give us a placement for our half inch channel and when we put our box together we'll make sure that the side with the lines is facing towards the outside now to do this construction we'll start with one of our bigger pieces on the bottom and then we'll glue on the end piece and then butt up these two sides their size so they fit right um, butted up against that end piece like this and like this and once those are set up I'll add my second large piece on the top and then I'll let that thoroughly dry. While the box is drying we can build our channel piece and I've started with the double thickness of the half inch strip here on the bottom and I'm just going to run a bead of glue along each edge so I'm just building a little open-ended box here. These are my double thicknesses of quarter inch wide. And then I'll finish that construction by making sure it's square and that my tubing fits inside it and then I'll finish by putting the single thickness of the medium weight chipboard on top. And once the box and the channel are dry, we can add the channel where we marked our lines here on the end of the box. And I'm putting the side with the single thickness against the box and using my lines to make sure I've guided it in position correctly. And I'll give that a little pressure and then make sure that that is thoroughly dry. And we can just set this box aside for a little while. 